this is a story of a fish. To the Jujuroa people of northeast Victoria, it was known as Wananbiu. Today we know it as Macquarie Perch. This was a fish that was once so common, it turned the rivers black during their migrations in their millions. But white settlement, we had the clearing of the land, grazing of stock, bushfires, 1914 drought on top of the Hughes Creek was followed by the biggest flood on record in 1916 and the sand moved into the creek. Since then Macquarie perch have been scarce in the Hughes Creek, it's one of the last places they're found in Victoria and they're hanging on by their fingertips. Hughes Creek is a tributary of the Goulburn River in northeast Victoria and I grew up in this area. I you know, fished it a lot with my family and Macquarie perch were once abundant uh, in the Goulburn River itself but are now extremely rare and the Macquarie perch are no longer found throughout the Hughes Creek they're confined to about 12 to 15 kilometres in a section of creek which we call the gorge and the reason they've hung on here despite all of the sand is in the gorge the water flow tends to keep the holes going and provide them with spawning sites so this is a very important place for the future of Macquarie perch Hughes Creek's a high priority stream for the CMA, it's identified in our waterway strategy and the primary reason for that is because of the presence of Macquarie perch, Macquarie perch being a nationally endangered species. We want to work with other agencies like Arthur Railer Institute and Waterwatch to try and improve the condition of the stream for the Macquarie perch. So some of the techniques we use to, to do the fish monitoring include backpack electrofishing this technique involves putting, putting a current of electricity into the water which temporarily immobilises fish just long enough for us to be able to capture the fish. So all fish that we capture we, we measure and weigh all the, all the fish that we catch. We also tag uh, individual fish that are of suitable size as well. Another passive technique that we use to capture fish is fike netting and we generally deploy these nets overnight to, to trap the fish when they're moving for, for feeding. So this is one of the few remaining streams that still have a perch population. We want to try and make them more resilient so they're not as vulnerable to changes um, in the environment like drought. We've been undertaking macroinvertebrate monitoring in the Hughes Creek at three trial sites prior to the works being undertaken for the habitat improvement and we'll continue to do further monitoring after the works and into the future to identify if there's been any change in the macroinvertebrate population in these sites. And the reason that we monitor for macroinvertebrates is that they're actually a water quality indicator and they can indicate the health of the waterways. So the different macroinvertebrates that we find have got different ratings. The aquatic macroinvertebrates are, are probably nearly the base level of the food chain. So we've got things like they're feeding the fish and the turtles and then they in turn feed the birds and so on. So for the long term future of Macquarie Perch in the Hughes Creek, the problem is how to deal with the sand, millions of tonnes of it. And we've got some ideas and we're taking the first baby steps along the way to solving the problem. And if we can solve it, then we can bring back the Macquarie Perch in numbers and perhaps one day get them right back down into the Goulburn River. There currently isn't a lot of knowledge about how to manage sand in, the, in streams like this to create depth. So what we wanted to do to enable us to continue with these works with the best results is run a few trials with different forms of structure. We want to reinstate depth in the channel by placing wood and rocks in a form that will create scour. So basically we want deep pools for the Macquarie perch and we need to move the sand to do that. We've placed these structures at intervals along the channel trying to recreate situations where deep holes can be retained. This is an upstream angled groin where we create scour at the end of it as the water hits it is deflected and we get scour developing at the end of that groin. This is a downstream pointing groin which is raised so what we're having is the actual flow going underneath it and that's scouring the bed. We've also tried to protect the areas where sand is naturally depositing as we want to stabilise those so we've placed groins above those to deflect flow and try and encourage them to stabilise and perhaps grow. If we can store the sand in those areas it means we can keep hopefully the main channel free to maintain depth. So good riparian vegetation is also important for Macquarie perch. It not only provides shade for fish, it also stabilises banks and reduces sediment inputs entering our creeks. It also is a source of woody debris falling into the creek and also contributes to the primary production of, of our waterways. 
So at these three trial sites, we've undertaken pre and post monitoring so we can evaluate the results that we're achieving through the different types of structures we've placed for habitat. Physical surveys have been part of that, so we've had these sites surveyed so we can identify the features of the stream and the changes that we can create after we've done the works. We're really happy to find that Macquarie Perch is starting to show signs of recovery, finding the highest abundance of Macquarie Perch in Hughes Creek since surveys were started in 2006. Most importantly, we're finding um, young of year, little juvenile Macquarie Perch, indicating uh, Macquarie Perch are, are breeding quite well in the creek now. Our long-term goal for Macquarie Perch in Hughes Creek is to continue to expand their range downstream towards the Goulburn River. This has been achieved by reinstating habitat to improve connectivity um, to one day allow Macquarie Perch to access the Goulburn River where there's more permanent water sources in times of um, uncertainty with climate change.